What's up guys, welcome back to another video, hope you're all doing well today. Welcome to a video on a track that I have a feeling could be one of them kind of like public lobby favourites. Maybe one of them might even go as far to say replaces like Walnut and Farm, Paletta V2 etc. This is Wolf Creek MX and it's created by Danny Alves who's been out of the game for a little while but nice to see him coming back with a track release. I have already spun a few laps around this track, I was playing it yesterday with Charlie. Um, obviously this video being recorded well ahead of time. I probably should have recorded it with him to be honest but it was just for a little bit of fun hopping on the game for 10 minutes and the track is it's actually really good fun. Uh, it's not a difficult track by any means you know, there's no really technical sections. Now, this section here I love if I go left side we can go double and then big jump over to the left or if you go right side there's a big triple and then a slightly smaller one after that so there's multiple lines we've got dotted around uh, the rut seems to hold you uh, pretty pretty damn well not difficult by any means there's one or two jumps that are slightly on the larger side so if you're one of them players that really does prefer the 250 over the 450s you just really want to make sure that you're carrying as much momentum around the track as possible if you've been putting off buying that new mx gear or you're just looking for some new daily mx related clothing then head on over to fxrracing.com code mxpr underscore lins 15 at checkout will give you 15 percent off all motocross and lifestyle products this code is applicable to the european swedish and norwegian websites and not canada or the usa and whilst I've got your attention, you may as well subscribe to the channel. It's just one click of a button and it puts a big old smile on my face. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. What I will say, which is something that's become a bit more apparent to me as of late, no, no longer using reshade on this game, there's some parts of the track that are quite dark, which can be a little bit difficult to spot with all of the shadows. But it's, you can kind of look at it in two ways. One is it's a little bit dark that might make it look, look a bit like doom and gloom or a little bit ugly but then the other side is it will make parts of the track more difficult where you can't see the ruts and the bumps quite as well and it gives you that kind of like a washugal vibe since that's all the commentators in real life ever go on about when they're at washugal is all about the, the shadows and how it affects the riding uh, the jumps themselves they i think the jump faces are built really really nicely so you can send some absolutely nasty whips along here and then overall he said there's 50 pit spaces so if you're not racing on a server and just have it up for open practice, you can get up to 50 people in there, which is quite nice. Not many tracks do have that functionality these days. Um, and then there's 38 start gates, um, which I thought was weird at first, but then you might just not have had a, a wide enough start area to accommodate like a full 40. So it's not the end of the world, let's be honest. How many situations do you really get these days where you manage to get a full 40-man lobby regardless? Um, but it's really good fun. You know, Daniel Alves is... All of his tracks I've played so far, well, they all seem to have like a good flow to them. There's nothing like weird or funky about it at all. And I'll show you this uh, different line up here, which is quite cool. So if you go to the right side, oh, I overjumped that a bit. Am I going to make it? Yes, there we go. So then you go triple, and then you just get to hit this as like a smaller jump too. You go all the way around the outside here, because that inside roller does slow you down a bit. You haven't got to have loads of speed for this section, because there's just a fairly small double there. Then we have a triple and into another triple. Get to absolutely send us sideways. Uh, what I will say is that the shadowy parts aside, I, I quite like the environment of the whole place. You know, we've got a little, uh, I don't know, don't know if you want to name it an ocean or a lake or a sea, whichever one. You know, we've got a, a body of water. There you go over to the side there. And then one other part of the track later on, there's a, like a little pond in the middle. Um, I just think overall it's, it's very nice. It's very aesthetically pleasing, which is, I think... In terms of like just track quality these days overall, I think a lot of people are spending a good amount of time focusing on how a track looks, not just how it rides. I feel like you can have a really, really good riding track that flows nicely, but if it's not pleasant to look at, no one's really going to spend loads of time on it. So there's, there's, there's lots of moving parts when it comes to creating a track, and I suppose if you want to kind of solidify yourself in those upper echelons of track creators you need to have the full package and i i think honestly that having the aesthetics as well as the overall riding feel is a huge part of that now what i will say is that obviously the, the main tra the track itself the motocross track really really good fun i feel like there's a lot of unused area off in the distances um around here so uh, I, maybe it might be worth having like a little turn track maybe a little trail around the outside um, I'm not sure if uh, Danny has ever dabbled in Supercross tracks before, but you could even have a small Supercross track somewhere. Uh, I see that he has already updated the link for this track once, 
And the sole reason being was that one person asked for a potato version of the track. Uh, if you are unaware of what that means, it just means like a low quality version. Apparently they was getting some frame issues. I personally, like I've, I mean, I know I've got a good, good PC, but every all of my settings are maxed out at the moment. Like anti-aliasing is, anti -aliasing is maxed. Uh, I've got 3D screens set. We've got grass on, I think. Do not have grass on. I'm a total liar. Just want to double check that. Let's turn the 3D grass on. So there you go. I mean, move about, jiggle about a bit. Zero, di zero differences in frames. Uh, so that's cool. We've got 3D grass, and he does mention that if you do like struggle frame-wise, turn the grass off and turn the track screens off because uh, if anyone's played on the stock track Assen, uh, you know that there's like uh, a monitor or a, a screen as you ride around that kind of shows the cameras of the track which this track also has, and that is quite a rare occurrence on custom tracks. I wouldn't even know where to start to implement a feature like that, so very, very cool that we've got one limb on here as well. I mean, it's one of the things, it doesn't affect the riding at all, it really doesn't even affect the track as a whole, like you wouldn't need it, no one would probably notice a difference with or without it, but it's just them little little extra things that I think make stuff look really, really cool. We've even got marshals dotted around on the marshal points, which again, don't see very often, usually... You can, you'll see like Marshall points where it's like a little wooden platform like that guy standing over there or, or or not to be fair I mean I didn't have any on, on the track that I made um, but he's gone to the point of having the Marshall points and a Marshall and we got bales dotted around everywhere stop you cutting the track we've got Spongebobs now uh, this is the little pond that I was on about earlier looks looks very nice uh, water is a little bit on the dark side a little bit murky but I suppose let's, let's be honest we're at a motocross track you're never really going to get anywhere with like super pristine clear water and this, is this red thing, is this like a sprinkler system? How you water the track? I think, yeah, no, actually it is. So that's quite cool that he's got it set up right next to the pond as well. So it makes sense. There's a logical reason for it. And all these tiny little details that probably don't mean much to anyone, but I like going through them and picking them out. And hopefully if Danny watches this, he's uh, he's happy enough knowing that all of his hard work hasn't gone to waste. Got a, a Red Rider truck over there. Again, I mentioned in one of my previous videos how much work Red Rider's been doing for the community as a whole with all of his public asset releases. So all brilliant stuff to see. And I think because of the way this track's built and it not being super difficult by any means, it really does open the door for everybody to hop on it and feel like they can go fast. So that's kind of why I feel this track's going to be one of them popular ones on the track list. I mean, Charlie felt like exactly the same way. He thinks that I wouldn't even be surprised if we see this track in like a Papiti server rotation. I have not been checking lap times or anything like that. Having no max HUD now, it's not easy to see on the flyer. And I don't really bother keep going back to the pits all the time. But I'm, I don't believe there's any issues with like timing gates or laps not counting at all. Uh, I don't think there's any ways of like really scumbagging low lines over jumps or like cutting the track anywhere. Because uh, that's one of the biggest issues that... Uh, we have at the moment when it comes to tracks that are on Papiti server rotations is first of all you want a track that ideally has 40 gates if possible I know that like Forest and Club etc don't have those but they're just small examples uh, you want a track that's got 40 gates you want a track that isn't easily cuttable especially on lap one because there's some tracks in this game you can wait for the gate to drop you can even pull a u-turn on the start and head straight for the finish line and and it will count but you haven't got to do the rest of the track beforehand so you want tracks that are 40 gates, you can't cheat on them, uh, and they're just ones that are fun, I guess, ones that are enjoyable. Because I, I hop on Papiti rarely these days, to be fair, there's not um, much extra for me to do so after I've done that MMR grinding a while back. There's nothing like new and exciting just yet, although I believe they're talking about like starting a new season in the near future. Exact dates, I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there that I know it's been mentioned. Uh, so maybe I'll hop on it again when, when that all gets updated and released. Yeah, it'll be nice to see some uh, more tracks being thrown for Petey's way. And in all fairness, I see some people moaning at him directly for why the the tracks are always on the same stock ones over and over again. But he's just doing what the community wants. The, the majority of the community are still very set in their ways to play Forest and Club. And then if they're feeling a little bit quirky to step out of the box and do like a Paletta V2. One thing I will say is when I'm in those servers, because they're on a rotation... Anytime it comes up on the Winchester tracks, whether it's the MX of Nations version or the normal one, that tends to be when I leave the server. Because they're set to five lap races, however Winchester's finish line is like just before the start straight, so it ends up being a six lap around there. And they're over two minute long lap times, and the track itself is fairly like flat and, and boring. 
Uh, so it ends up being a long race, a boring race, and I just that's usually when I leave and I can't be bothered anymore. I, I did like back when e each server... I'm really sorry, I have to keep cutting away. My, my voice is randomly going today for some reason. So uh, what I was saying is I, I used to like when there was a different track on each server. Uh, as in, they was like dedicated to each track. So, if for example I wanted to be a forest warrior for a couple of hours one day, so like just a few hours straight, I could be. And then when I got bored, I hop over to the club server, so to speak, and then the paletta server. And one thing that I found really helped is if I wanted to be extra sweaty and try and get as much MMR as quickly as possible, is I could join a server, do the race, instantly back out of the race, and then go back to the server list and see which other server is like isn't in a race yet and it's set to practice because it's quicker for me to leave one server join another and then start that next race than it is to sit and wait for the whole next practice session and then the race to start so if you ever do want to get your papiti grind on then that is the way to do it there's some like little insider tips from the world's sweatiest but world's second sweatiest papiti player i would say i think troy still uh still takes a lead on that one for me i'm not i haven't de uh dethroned him yet one thing that i'm worried about actually is uh, so obviously you guys know that i'm I'm going away. I'm worried about like anything exciting happening while I'm gone because <laughs> it's so like it's really difficult because I'm home for three out of the four weeks per month. I usually go and visit my girlfriend for four or five days each month, so like I'm just away from home completely. And usually in that time when I'm away, either an incredible track will drop, which I then don't get to cover as soon as it drops, and you guys have to wait. Or alternatively, people just like when I was in the the height of my Papiti grinding, uh, it was just an extra couple of days where I would just be losing out, and losing out on so many points, and it feels like you've got a massive mountain to climb by the time you get back, uh, which, I mean, pros and cons. Pros is, get to see my girlfriend for a while, and then cons is, uh, the, the internet world leaves me for a while as well. And, uh, I mean, by the time you're watching this video, this, tra oh, Christ, I forgot where I was on the track. God, survive that, please. Ah, oh, so close. By the time you're watching this video, the track, I think, would have been out for about a week already, and it's just a case of timing, you know, obviously I'm pre-recording a bunch and it's just how the, the schedule ends up being. I would have loved to bring you this video kind of the day after this track release, because I think it's going to be one of them really important tracks to cover overall. I think everyone's going to really, really enjoy it. And, oh, get on the brakes, there we go, I keep over jumping that jump every single time. Get on the bonus there. Yeah, the only thing, like... What you have to understand is in the YouTube space is you, if you're not first to everything that you do, the uh, the views definitely suffer. Because if I was to release a video on let's say like a shop track that comes out like a really hyped massive compound, if you guys have already seen a video from three different YouTubers on that track already, are you are you really going to want to see me play it as well? I mean, some some people will say yes because they're just here for me, but I think a lot of people they like seeing the new tracks to see if they are going to go download them themselves. Especially when it comes to paid content, they want to see if it's worth their money before they buy, because there's like no refund policy as such at the moment. Um, so yeah, it kind of sucks when when I go away and anything exciting happens during that time. So I'll cross my fingies, fingies and tootsies, see if uh, hopefully nothing interesting happens while I'm gone. Uh, I'm 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 hoping the the Friday stream at Bud's Creek all went well. Again, I'm recording this early Friday, so I mean anything could have happened at that point. Watch this is like past Lynn's trying to predict what's going to happen. Uh, I reckon I'll probably get like a game crash and then maybe a P3 or something. <laughs> that seems to be how my outdoor races go at the moment. Um, but yeah, either way, we, I've done the last my last live stream that you would have seen would have been Bud's Creek. And then the next one that you'll be seeing is the Thursday that I get back. We've got round four of the Ace Moto Enduro series, which right now is my favourite championship that I'm taking part in. I, I There's so much... Like, it's really... First of all, it's fun to do. But when it all goes well, it's really relaxing for me as well. I've not got a... I can kind of shut my brain off a little bit. And it's been a long time since I've been able to do competitive races without having to absolutely sweat... Well, I just sweat so hard and try so hard. And with the enduro stuff, because I think everyone's kind of just learning it, whereas I've been there and done that, and I'm now just riding around the tracks and enjoying it, it's just so nice. Yeah, a lot of people would probably get quite bored winning a race by three plus minutes, but I I really do like that. It's been a been a while since I've had that like feeling of being dominant in any sort of series. The 2022 Supercross Linz, I think, was the peak of the game for me. I don't think I'm ever going to be the speed that some of the younger kids in this game are these days. It's just nuts. I couldn't 
imagine trying to get a bike around the, tr the, the track not only that fast but consistently that fast if i do consistent pace i'm two seconds a lap slower it may be one off i could maybe go that fast after a lot of grinding but in terms of race speed nah, I, I can't keep up like that so a lot of the time these days i tend to just ride my race try and be consistent if everybody else crashes more than me and i end up winning then massive w that's happened a few times now but if everyone stays on two wheels then usually i'm looking at like a p3 p4 depending on the day depending on who else shows up but i've kind of accepted it at this point there was a period of time where i would say i was massively in denial especially in 2023 supercross i'd get so annoyed all the time even at like a p3 and sometimes even at a p2 and you just have to realize that you know sometimes faster people come along and i just need to enjoy the game for what it is and i definitely think that I'm improving at that, at enjoying the game more. We had a little kind of spell the first few rounds of the Aerial Outdoors Championship where I was just absolutely hating everything about the game, whether it was physics or the tracks and just the live streams probably weren't that enjoyable to watch with me complaining the whole time. But I feel like we've turned over a new leaf as of late. I feel like things have been a lot more positive and I hope that is reflective in the content and that it's making you guys enjoy it even more. Uh, I really have been enjoying this track. I've, whilst I've just been sat here waffling i've just been kind of flowing around it there's nothing like weird and wacky that's been happening I, I do keep making a couple of the same mistakes each lap but i think that's just where my brain's kind of focused on commentating mode right now rather than riding i've got the road set to one like one exactly and i've probably done about five or six laps so far and m most of the time it's been in the same line to be fair and it's not getting like super rough and super eroded away um danny does mention on his mods post about like your road settings maybe you should like turn it up a little bit for 10 or less people and then looking at about 0 0.5 0 0.6 if you've got more of a full lobby so i'll definitely keep that in mind for when we do some public lobby races around here in the future and let me know your feelings about this track do you like it do you dislike it what do you think could it be improved do you see this becoming one of them new like casual like player favorite tracks uh, very very straightforward so i don't think you have to be amazing at the game to get some clean consistent laps around here the jumps are very very forgiving you can absolutely throw a sideways off of each and every one and all the just all around a, a job well done i think good attention to detail in the environment does make you feel like it's an actual track rather than you know just it feels a bit more realistic than something like i made for example where it's just a track and then a bunch of trees dotted around this actually has an environment to it it's got spectators dotted around all over the place uh, the objects and where they're placed they all make sense too and just really good local track vibes and it wouldn't surprise me if we see like some maybe fun races around tracks like this in the future even one two five races when the new uh, two stroke packs eventually get released uh, so well done danny thank you very much for releasing this for us as there, there's my first like stupid stupid mistake of the race um i hope you guys have enjoyed the video most importantly oh and this is exactly what i meant by the screen before i tune out is you get to kind of watch yourself riding around at the same time um uh, so yeah if you if you go into your settings and you turn like track screens off that that won't be visible and that is a big cause of fps drops if you are having any uh, so thank you very much for watching please do drop a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you are new i do really appreciate it have a lovely rest of the day wherever you're up to and i'll catch you in the next video Peace.